Welcome to the June 2nd, 2021 Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, first item I have on my agenda is staff announcements. Emily? Um, I don't really have too many announcements. Glad to see you all. It's been a while since I've been at one of these meetings, so um, I'm happy to be here. And Eric's going to be handling all the reports as usual, and I know he's been a great staff liaison so far, so excited to be here but no no other announcements perfect congrats to and welcome back thank you all right so we'll keep moving so next item is consideration of approval of the may 6 2021 meeting minutes ready to entertain a motion when the board's ready i move to approve the minutes from the previous meeting motion made by frank is there a second 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 by jeff all in favor say aye. 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 So no one opposed, minutes approved. Are there any citizen comments? Any citizen comments, staff? Okay. Is there a motion to close the public comment? Motion closed. Motion made, is there a second? There's a second. Seconded by Frank. All in favor say aye. Aye. No one's opposed. So pu public comments closed. So we'll get into the first item on the agenda tonight. It's variance requests to allow more than the maximum number of retaining walls on a site. So that's the first one. Allow for a taller than a allowable retaining wall within a front yard. That's the second one. The third one is to allow for a taller than allowable retaining wall within a rear yard. That's the third one for the property located at 204 King David's Court. Staff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So as stated, this is a variance request um, for a 15 acre parcel located at 204 King David's Court within the Avalon subdivision. Um, and the applicant is requesting three variances necessary to construct the design home on the parcel. Um, the variances required are for the maximum height of retaining walls in the front and rear yards of the home and more than the maximum allowed number of retaining walls on a residential site. So staff has reviewed these requests for the three required criteria as established by state law. Um, the first of which requires uniqueness in the shape of uh, the lot or the topography of the lot in question. Um, or some extraordinary or exceptional situation which prevents the zoning ordinance to be followed as written. Staff did find that there are exceptional topographical conditions on the site that necessitate increased height in retaining walls, as well as an additional number of retaining walls in order to build a home on the developable area. The second criteria requires that exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. And staff does believe that there are significant practical difficulties in the development of this site due to exceptional topography. Um, and the applicant has designed a home that does not encroach into the 20% slopes that dominate the site. In doing so, additional retaining wall allowances for height and quantity are needed. And therefore, staff believes this criteria is also met. The final criteria requires that relief may be granted without subs substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Staff didn't, does, believe, uh, does not believe that these requests would be detrimental to the public good, nor would it impair the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Residential retaining wall requirements are in place to prevent a residential site from being dominated by retaining walls, resulting in aesthetic concerns for the neighborhood. Um, and due to the location on a heavily wooded hilltop and just the overall size of the parcel, uh, staff believes there would be no direct conflict with this intent. Um, so because all three of the criteria are met for all of the applicant's requests, staff recommends approval of all the requests associated with this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, staff. Next, we'll move to the applicant for this item. If you're here and would like to step to the podium and state your name. Uh, yes, I'm Mitchell Barnett. I'm the architect representing the owners of the property, Sammy and Anna Puri. <clears throat> and we've been working with the staff, planning staff and engineering staff for three or four months now, trying to accommodate not only the needs of the zoning ordinance, but uh, also 
that fine balance of what the, the owners are hoping to do and build on this property. Uh, I have some I have some handouts. Should I? I they just help give give a little more information. Okay. Oh, okay. Do you still want me to pull it up? Oh, yeah. You know, that may be, may be helpful. I think the only one is the... the I'm sorry. The only... I have a handout, and we have some uh, display items for the big screen here. Perfect. Thank you. Probably the most important one is the last sheet of this handout that just gives you an overview of the Avalon property. It's probably important to note that I, I am the architect for the Avalon Community HOA, have been since the inception, since 2004. Um, and so I've seen every single house that's been built in that area. This particular piece of property on the back page, I don't think we got it uh, to Eric in time in order to make a, a presentation on the big screen. But it shows the plat for the Avalon community, and we highlight it on this plat, the property in question. It is a 15-acre piece of property, and it is surrounded by an additional 15 acres of common area. So there's actually 30 acres of land area that this house will be set in the middle of, which goes to what Eric had said, that not only is it not visible, it probably shows no uh, uh, impact into the community whatsoever. Uh, this property was previously owned and, and when it was uh, owned by, it was owned by Trace Atkins and he built a temporary construction drive onto the property up to the center point which is what we call the building site. I think it's important to note that one of the topographical hardships that we have of this total 30 acres which you know, by a little bit of math, 1.3 million square feet of land area, there's only 15,000 square feet of buildable envelope on the center of the, the hill, uh, pretty small. Uh, so we, of course, reduce the size of the house, driveway, terrace, pool, everything in order to accommodate and fit within that space. Um, and Eric, if, if you pull up on the big screen, I think we can go to, um, the layout of the house or the positioning of the house on the property. Yes, that's that's probably a, a good one. That is, I think, the third page in your package of submittal. One of the compromises, and I, I, I say this loosely, one of the accommodations that the owner has graciously allowed us to do in order to fit this project onto the, the property appropriately is to put a basement garage in here. Uh, and in order to have a basement garage, there's only one access onto this property on this um, um, submittal that you see on the screen. The gray areas that you see are the, the areas of 20% or greater slope. Uh, so access around the house is almost or literally impossible. So the only way to access into the basement garage is through the front, uh, coming on the front of the area. And that was what requires that retaining wall because we're going down into a basement area uh, that is in excess of two feet in uh, height. Uh, there was no other way to avoid that. On the rear of the property, there's most of that is terrace area and swimming pool area. And I think when you look at this, the requirement for the zoning says that no retaining wall can be in excess of six feet in height. Well, because of that, we had to terrace. So we have two retaining walls terraced. And that's what gives us over the maximum allowable number. There's no other way to get down to natural grade if you do that. And the whole purpose of this design is to not encroach into the 20% areas, um, which, you know, the Avalon community is full of those kind of exceptions. It's uh, just the nature of this spot. But over this, this entire 15 acres of property, we only have this small little segment as the available area. And you can see in the, what's shown on the screen, the white area uh, is what we would consider available, buildable 
area, but you can see almost one third of that whole area is backyard patio terrace and one third is front yard turnaround and driveway. Uh, so we did minimize the size of the house, not only to be compatible with the Avalon community, but uh, compatible with the owner's needs, but also to fit within this site. Uh, there, were no, there were really no other options. And I think the engineering department and the planning department uh, who have been wonderful to work with, they have helped us along trying to make all of the, the necessary accommodations on this. Um, I think we're all in agreement that there's probably no other way we could have done this to meet the needs. Okay, thank you. I'd like to ask a question if I could, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure your engineering firm that you're working with is aware there are colluvial soils in that area. And that they're going to be some pretty deep footings. We actually have soils reports that have already been prepared. They were prepared by uh, the previous owner, Trace Atkins, and he shared those with us. Uh, we're in solid bedrock up there. We don't have, fortunately, we don't have colluvial. Good. That's, yeah. <laughs> There are what, some in that area because uh, I had a friend that lived just over the hill there. Well, no, you're exactly right. I've been in the Avalon community for all these years, and there's a great number of properties that have suffered through that colluvial soil issue. On this particular property, I guess it's just because it's on the top of the hill or something, uh, it's mostly solid bedrock. Thank you. Okay. Are there any citizen comments? We have any email comments, Eric, at all? Okay. All right, is there a motion to close the public comment? Motion to close public meeting. Motion made, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jeff. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 So no one's opposed, so public <clears throat> comments closed. Staff is taking these items kind of as one, they're all interrelated. If the board, uh, would like to combine these into one motion. Uh, we can handle it that way. We can split them up if need be as well. If you're comfortable handling it with one motion, I'm ready to entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a <clears throat> motion to approve. Uh, item number one is met because of the narrowness and shallowness and the topographical conditions of the lot. Item two is met because it would create exceptional and particularly some difficult except in the their exceptions to the hardship to the property and number three relief can be granted without any detriment to the zoning ordinance all right so motion made is there a second second, second by jeff all in favor say aye. aye aye no one's opposed so item passes So staff, you'll be in touch after each of these items. You'll be in touch with the applicants after the meeting, correct? Just to follow up. Okay. All right. So moving on to item two, it's a variance request to encroach up to seven feet into the required side yard setback for the property located at 116 Wembley Court. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as stated, this is variance request for the residential parcel located at 116 Wembley Court within the Royal Oaks subdivision. And the applicant is requesting a variance to encroach up to seven feet into a 10 foot side yard setback in order to construct an open walled carport attached to the west side of an existing residence. Uh, staff has reviewed this request for the three required criteria as established by state law. The first of which requires uniqueness in the site um, or topography of the lot in question, or some other extraordinary or exceptional situation which prevents the zoning ordinance to be followed as written. Uh, staff found that there are no exceptional topographical conditions or uniqueness of the shape of the site that do not allow development as required by the zoning ordinance. Um, so therefore, staff believes that this criterion is not met. Um, the second criterion requires that exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. Staff believes that there are significant practical difficulties uh, due to the ne necessary location in order to meet the side setback. To meet the setback requirements with a carport of this size, 
It would need to be moved further back on the site, which would require the removal of an existing fence as well as a large tree. Um, additionally, this move back would create additional impervious surface um, and therefore increase water runoff on the site. However, the design and width of the proposed carport allows for 11 feet per vehicle uh, for a total of 22 feet wide. The city of Franklin requires a minimum of nine feet on parking spaces and 10 feet uh, per vehicle on indoor garages. Um, and because the applicant is requesting to build a carport that exceeds parking with standards, staff views this as a potential self-imposed hardship uh, because 20 foot wide carport would not require a variance at all. Um, so staff does defer to the board as to whether or not this criterion is met. The final criterion requires that relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Um, staff does not believe that this request would be detrimental to the public good, nor would it impair the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Uh, the zoning ordinance establishes setbacks to prevent large massing blocks of structures and to protect structures, citizens, and property values. Due to the open nature of the carport and its location over an existing driveway, uh, staff does not find a direct conflict with the intent of the zoning ordinance, and because of this, staff believes that this criterion is met. Uh, staff did receive a call from a member of the public with questions about this project, as well as concerns regarding the potential change in water runoff caused by the new roof line um, and any potential fire spread due to the proximity to the property line. Um, it should note that the carport in question does meet our requirements um, in regards to fire spread, um, and it is not within 10 feet of another, pro another building. Um, but because all three of the criteria are not met for the applicant's request, staff is recommending disapproval of this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay. If you could pull up the, maybe the layout for us on this one, Eric, if you've got it available. So next we'll move to the applicant. If you'd like to step forward and state your names and. My name is Brad Johnson. I'm the owner at 116 Wembley Court. Um, thank you for your time and hearing our request. Um, so the reason that we are applying for this variance is we want to be able to, to protect our vehicles. And currently we're unable to park in our garage uh, due to how uh, structurally the garage was designed. Uh, we have uh, two steel posts in the middle of the garage which don't allow us to fit the vehicles in or open the doors uh, if we were to get the vehicle in. Um, as well as due to the shape of the lot, we're unable to make the turn into the side load garage. Um, we don't want to uh, exceed any width that's already taken up by our existing driveway, so it would be uh, the carport would be constructed on top of the existing driveway so we wouldn't be taking up any more space than we are already uh, occupying um, and i do understand that the drainage uh, could become an issue uh, i've actually spoken with uh, my neighbor who's uh, which is the adjacent neighbor uh, mr bruce white um, he brought the drainage to my attention and i did offer a solution of i would be putting uh, gutters and downspouts on the carport as well as uh, piping those downspouts to the back corner of our property line. Uh, that way we wouldn't be adding any extra water runoff into his side yard. Uh, we would actually, in fact, be uh, reducing the amount of water uh, runoff into his yard. Okay. Thank you. Brad, um, <clears throat> the um, what what is the reason that it could not work properly for you with a 20 foot to 10 foot um, parking areas? The reason we went out to the 22 by 22 uh, was just, again, we were just trying to cover the existing driveway space um, and 22 feet gets us to the edge of the narrowest portion of the driveway. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want to go past that. Um, and then again, just due to the angle of how the driveway approaches uh, the house, uh, I wanted to give us as much space as possible to where we would be able to fit both vehicles in, uh, especially the one that would be parking closest to the garage if the one that parks away from the garage is already present. 
Uh, so I just wanted to give us a little bit of extra room to make sure that we were able to do that and that it functioned properly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are there any citizen comments? Eric mentioned one. Are there any other citizen comments? Okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public comment. Motion to close. Motion made by Frank. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jeff. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So public comment is closed. Any other questions from the, the board, at least factual questions? If not, I'm ready to entertain a motion. <clears throat> so Eric was, if, if, I know they submitted 22 by 20. If they would have submitted 20, would it, would it have been considered by staff? Or is the, is the additional two feet at the, the crutch? in this application? The way the zoning ordinance is written is it allows for appurtenances such as this um, to encroach up to five feet into a side yard setback. Um, with it designed as it is, it encroaches up to seven feet in the front and four feet in the rear. So the front, because of the way the lot line is um, compared to the house, right. encroaches two feet too far into the setback than what is allowed. Um, so if it were either designed two feet less wide in the front or two feet overall narrower, then it would just meet the zoning ordinance outright and wouldn't need a variance. So you're saying a 10 foot stall on both sides would not even require a variance? That is correct. If the carport were 20 feet wide, it would meet the zoning ordinance because the zoning ordinance allows it to encroach five feet into the side yard setback. As it's designed right now with 11 foot stalls, it would encroach seven feet in the front. So a disapproval does not prevent him from building a 20-foot carport there? That is correct. Thank you. You understand that, Brad? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. If the applicant would like to make a comment, I know staff answer the question. If you have any, you know, kind of follow-up comment to that, I'm happy to let you make that. So. I don't want somebody to put words in your mouth, so I want to give you a chance right. to speak. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, I, I think the only, uh, sorry, I wasn't aware of the, the five foot allowance. I, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, I don't, um, I guess the only other thing I would say is if we did decrease by the two feet to get inside of that without and then we wouldn't need the variance. Um, I'm just curious, I, I wanna protect the drainage on that side, so I don't know how I'd pipe the downspouse if, it, if we didn't go all the way to the edge of the driveway. That's, that's my only other, I guess, concern if we were to get inside of that, uh, the edge of the driveway. But I do, I do understand uh, I guess 20 by 20 would allow to do this without a variance. Um, and, and with the open carport, you're going to squeeze getting in, but then you, you have room, though, beyond the post. So you're still, you know, you could just be the one on the left, and you're going to have to pull right. tight to the post. <laughs> you have built, Which if, I am right now. If it's, for, if, it's, if it's for weather purposes, you could have some overhang that would, because the roof line, would it be considered an encroachment if, he, if he, the roof line went into the and not the actual stalls i will need to double check how a pertinence is defined but i believe roof line is included in that definition so i think it is the the five foot encroachment would include roof line okay i do have one more question if that's okay um, if 
uh, we had to go the 20 foot wide route. I guess, would the, I guess the depth at that point, would that be in question? To, uh, to clarify, the, the depth is currently meets as designed and applied for meets the zoning ordinance because the back only encroaches four feet because of the angled lot line. So the front encroaches seven feet where the back encroaches four. Um, and so it could be 22 feet wide in the rear and only 20 feet in the front and still meet the zoning ordinance um, so that the depth is not a concern. Thank you. All right, so let me ask this question. To, from a staff perspective, should we defer the item just to give the applicant and staff more time to work out details if, or are we dead set? You know, if we're, if we're going on the variance request, we can, you know, vote on that item. I just don't want to feedback there. I mean, he's not, he's not going to need anything from us if we just prove it. He can still go permit it based on a 20 foot. So Unless the roof overhang and, and gutters, well, yeah, that's the, the issue. Or you could, you could. I mean, I think that's a, up to the Board of Zoning Appeals if you decide to defer. I think from a staff perspective, we have as much information as we need to make a recommendation. But if the applicant wanted to study a potential different design and, and would be in agreement with that deferral, that might be a different, a different um, idea. In, in actuality, I mean, he can build his, his carport as long as it's 20 feet wide in the front and 20 and, and no more than 22 in the back. Sure. And so actually, he, he can have 10 foot bays without even coming feet. back in front of this board. I think the thing is if we take, so it's my understanding, if we take action on this, well, I mean, I guess we're looking at the item, so it won't matter either way. But if we take action on it, that's it. You can't right. come back for a second right. chance. So it would give the applicant you know, opportunity to look at options just to make sure that's the route they wanted to take. With, I would say too, in terms of staff, we can only look at what's in front of us. And so we haven't seen a design that is 20 feet wide to ensure that that does meet all the setbacks appropriately. Theoretically, it sounds like it would totally work. And I think that it probably would, but until you actually have it designed out, we don't know how those dimensions actually work. And especially with the drainage and the downspouts, that might need to be looked into more. So I do think there are some questions that staff can't say for certain, but it can definitely be designed in that way. I'm ready to entertain a motion if board members are ready. Yeah, I, I, I think just proving it isn't going to hurt his chances of still doing what he wants to do, in my opinion. That's so, your motion? So, uh, and you could actually, that end wall can be skewed as long as you stay that setback off your side property line. Your gable goes west. So you could actually build that skewed and still have more room in the back of the carport than you do in the front. Right. No one's, very few people are going to notice that. Right. So I, I'm, I'm, I move to disapprove the, the uh, variance request uh, to allow for an eight foot encroachment in the front yard setback for the property located at uh, my own right one. Okay. Motion made. Is there a second? I second. A second by Frank. All, of, all in favor of disapproval say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, seeing none, uh, item is disapproved. So next we'll move to our third item. It's a variance request to encroach up to eight feet into the required front yard setback for the property located at 4030 Nature's Landing Drive. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As stated, this is a variance request for a residential parcel, lo parcel located at 4030 Nature's Landing Drive within the Nature's Landing subdivision. And the applicant is requesting a variance to encroach up to eight feet into a 40 foot front yard setback in order to construct a front porch as shown in the included designs. Staff has reviewed this request uh, for the three required criteria as established by state law. 
the first of which requires uniqueness in shape or of topography on the lot in question or some other extraordinary and exceptional situation which prevents the zoning ordinance to be followed as written. Staff found that there are no exceptional topograph to topographical conditions and the shape of the site is rather unique and triangular. Um, however, this does not create an exceptional situation or condition in which the property cannot accommodate development. Um, as the applicant has shown and submitted design, the porch can be built two feet shorter uh, to meet the zoning ordinance. And because the property can accommodate development as required by the zoning ordinance, staff believes this criterion is not met. The second criterion requires that exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. Staff does not believe that there is any hardship upon the owner of the property related to this request so that it's not self-imposed. The house is currently being designed and can be designed in a way that meets the zoning ordinance, um, whether with the opportunity for a six foot deep front porch without needing a variance. Um, and therefore, staff does not believe that there's any hardship associated with this request, and therefore the criterion is not met. The final criterion requires that relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Uh, staff does not believe that this request would be detrimental to the public good as a two-foot encroachment into a 40-foot setback is very minimal. Um, however, this request does impair the intent of the zoning ordinance. Um, the applicant is seeking relief from standards for a self-imposed hardship caused by design and should be designed in a way to meet the zoning ordinance. However, because the applicant is requesting only a two-foot additional encroachment, this criterion does specify that it be a substantial impairment, um, and staff does not believe that this would be a substantial impairment, so therefore, staff believes that this criterion is met. Because two of the three criteria are not met uh, for the applicant's request, staff recommends disapproval of this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, Eric. Uh, next, we'll move to the applicant. I'm the architect for the project representing Fred and Linda Reynolds, the owners. Um, I guess a few comments on staff comments. Uh, the design is done. The permit's been pulled. They're grading on site, getting ready to put in foundations. Um, so it's not, it's, we're done with the design. <laughs> Don't make me go back to the design. Um, but in order to get the permit, then we went ahead and showed for the city the front porch at six feet. Um, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. We don't have a roof on that porch. It's basically like a raised patio, and we're going to have a seat wall around there, which then makes the actual space that you can walk on the front porch even smaller than six feet. And so that's one reason why we wanted the eight feet, so that you have comfortable space to move around on there. This. I don't know. I did not include that. I'm sorry. I should have. Um, and then for difficulties on the site, the grade from the front to the, from the back to the front drops 17 feet in topography. Um, and it's, it's at the end of a cul-de-sac. And so the back of the property is triangular in shape. And we have a TVA easement, which I don't think staff mentioned. TVA has an easement that cuts into that property that you can see on the site plan to where the buildable space for the lot with the 40 foot front setback, the side setbacks, and then TVA's easement in the back doesn't leave very much space to build. Um, again, it's at the end of a cul-de-sac and borders on the Harpeth River, which goes down a steep embankment. But we, the front of the house doesn't align with any other homes in the neighborhood. That bedroom wing that sticks out, that one kind of aligns with the neighboring house, but then once you drive around on the cul-de-sac and face the front of the house, that does not align with any other homes. So um, in our opinion, it, if the intent is for the setback is that it doesn't block any views and that the view through the neighborhood is all the setbacks for the homes are the same, then it doesn't change that for any of the homes. Um, and then just an interesting finding, I think, is that with the R2, when the neighborhood was built, then it has the 40-foot setback, but currently R2 has a 20-foot setback. 
Um, but again, we're not putting any roof structure past that 40 foot setback. It's just that raised patio with the seat wall around it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Are there any citizen comments? All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public comment. Motion to close. Motion made, is there a second? Second. Motion made and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 No aye. one's opposed, so public comment's closed. Go ahead, Frank. I'd like to ask a couple of questions of staff, please. I'm looking at the rendering of the subdivision plat. What are you considering to be the front yard in that property? <laughs> uh, the zoning ordinance defines front yard as anything in front of the front facade of the home. I can see the possibility of two front yards there <laughs> because of that cul-de-sac. The irregularity of this lot is I do disagree with staff on the irregularity of the lot. <clears throat> when you get on a cul-de-sac, that forces your uh, setbacks to be troubling to me. I will note, I think uh, staff mentioned this in the staff report. The applicant also, when I read the applicant letter, uh, the mention of the R2 zoning district, I guess under the new and old, so could you briefly just explain, Eric, so there's a vesting process, the board may not know this, there's a vesting process, this plan was approved prior to the new zoning ordinance, so it follows under the old rules. So you'll notice we're looking at a 40 foot setback, current setbacks are 20 feet. Um, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily change anything, but I... And, and that why, is correct. And why would it be considered under the 17 ordinance and not the current ordinance? To, to clarify, um, State law established in, I believe, 2015 um, created vesting rights for developments that requires them to be reviewed under the zoning ordinance that was in place at the time. Um, so rather than this project being reviewed with the 2020 ordinance, um, because the 2017 ordinance was in place when Nature's Landing subdivision was given its rights to develop, it needs to be reviewed under the 2017 ordinance, which has the 40 foot front yard setbacks compared to the 20 foot front yard setbacks that we have now with the 2020 ordinance. So state law requires us to review it by the old ordinance. I thought that was important though, just factually kind of what we're looking at. I'm ready to entertain a motion if a board member's ready. <clears throat> with you that the lot is a tough lot. I think what I'd like to do, if we can get a motion, at least on the floor, we can discuss, because I've got additional comments too. Hate to do too much back and forth, so if we okay. can just get a okay. motion going and go from there. to approve the variance request to allow for the eight foot encroachment into the front yard set back the property located at 4030 Nature's Landing Drive. And I'm going to base the approval by the fact that it's a porch, it has no roof, and I think at the end of the cul-de-sac, it doesn't encroach or impede in any manner. Okay. 
There's a motion for approval made. Is there a second? I second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Is there a discussion? Comments at all from the board before we vote? Uh, particularly the lot uh, uh, and, and, and the, the slope of the land. There are, there are a number of factors that would cause that to be a very irregular lot. Um, and, and I can see it being without any kind of detriment because it is at the very back of the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just uh, I think my comment one reason I mentioned the I guess the 40 foot to 20 foot is it usually goes in reverse the zoning ordinance is more restrictive so you're trying to prevent um, I guess a more restrictive so this is kind of one of those where it's reverse I do agree with my fellow board members I think the plot's very unusually shaped you've got topography you've got easements on the site yeah. Additional discussion before we vote? No more for me. Okay. I'm good. So motion made, seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Seeing none, items approved. Thank you. I think we are to our final item here. So uh, item number five, if I've got my numbers right here, four. No, I think it's the bush drive. Racing ahead here. So let's back up. <laughs> <laughs> so item number four, uh, variance request encroach up to 10 feet into the required rear yard setback for the property located at 3122 Bush Street. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so as stated, this is a variance request for a residential parcel located at 3122 Bush Street. The applicant is requesting a variance to encroach up to 10 feet into the 30-foot rear yard setback requirements in order to enclose an existing back porch. Staff has reviewed these, uh, this request for the three criteria as established by state law, the first of which requires uniqueness and shape or topography of the lot in question, or some other extraordinary or exceptional situation which, which prevents the zoning ordinance to be followed as written. Staff found that there is an exceptional situation due to a large drainage easement located behind the parcel. Um, the easement behind the property varies from 20 feet to 35 feet wide, forcing the rear property line um, to be pushed forward in order to accommodate it. Uh, the lots on the opposite side of the drainage easement are significantly deeper than the parcels on the western side, um, therefore creating a unique s situation and conditions causing this criterion to be met for the applicant's request. The second criterion requires that exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. Staff does believe that the strict application of the zoning ordinance would create practical difficulties because it prevents the homeowners from making alterations or changes such as the proposed vertical construction due to the existing porch extending four additional feet into the setback than allowed by the ordinance. Um, and therefore, staff believes that this criterion is also met. The final criterion requires that relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Staff does not believe that this request would be detrimental to the public good, nor would it be detrimental to the purpose of the zoning ordinance. The setbacks are established in order to prevent buildings from being constructed too close to public or private property. Um, and due to the large rear easement um, and the desire to construct vertically rather than extend further into the setback, staff believes that this criterion is met. Because staff believes that all of the criteria are met, for the applicant's request, staff recommends approval of this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, staff. Let's the applicant. Sorry to race ahead there on you. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm Julia Stevens. Um, thank you, Eric, for being so patient with me. I have been in touch with him a lot. Um, yeah, we're not changing the existing footprint of the deck. It was built originally when the house was built 18 years ago or so. So we're just hoping to put a roof on it and screen it in. Um, we've talked to all three of our immediate neighbors. Nobody has a problem with it. We're keeping all the trees in the backyard. We're not going to change the footprint. So um, we're hoping it's just going to move along and get approved. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Are there any citizen comments? All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public comment. Motion to close public portion. Motion made by Frank. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jeff. All in favor say aye. 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 So public comments closed. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a uh, motion. Yes, sir. I'd like ahead. to move to approve the variance request based on staff analysis, reasons of narrowness, shallowness, and shape of the specific piece of property. Item two, strict application. Any provisions enacted under zoning ordinance would result in particular and exceptional particular difficulties and an undue hardship to the owner of the property. Such relief, relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or impairing the current ordinance. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, so motion passes. Thank you. I think now we're to our last item. So item number five. <laughs> so it's a variance request. Uh, bear with us on this one. It's a mouthful. So uh, it's to allow more than the maximum number of retaining walls on a site. So that's the first one. The second one's to allow for a taller than an allowable retaining wall within a front yard. The third one is to allow for a taller than allowable retaining wall within a side slash rear yard. And the fourth is the required setback of a side facing garage from front house facade and then the last one is to allow for a larger than maximum allowable slope for a driveway for the property located at 601 Prince Valiant Court. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <laughs> so as stated, this variance request is for a two acre parcel located at 601 Prince Valiant Court within the Avalon subdivision. Um, and the applicant is requesting a total of five variances necessary to construct the designed home on the parcel. Um, the variances are, as you just read, um, <laughs> and these requests were reviewed. Um, the staff recommendations that you see um, are for the three retaining wall variances together um, and the fourth and fifth requests independently. So. Um, you'll see recommendations for the first three combined as they are all interrelated. Um, the fourth being the garage setback independent and the fifth being the driveway slope also independent. Um, so I will begin with requests one through three and staff analysis for those. Um, I recommend we take a vote for those at that time and then we move on to the fourth and then we move on to the fifth. Um, so staff reviewed the first three requests for the three criteria as established by state law. Um, the first of which requires uniqueness in shape or topography of the lot in question um, or some other extraordinary or exceptional situation which prevents the zoning ordinance from being followed as written. Staff found that there are exceptional topographical conditions on the site that necessitate increased height in retaining walls as well as an additional number of retaining walls um, in order to build a home on the developable area. Um, so therefore, staff believes that this criterion is met. The second criteria requires an exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. Staff believes that there are significant practical difficulties in development of this site due to the exceptional topography, and the applicant has designed a home that does not encroach into the 20% slopes across the site. In doing so, additional retaining wall allowances for height and quantity are needed, and therefore staff believes that this criterion is met. The final criterion requires that relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Staff does not believe that these requests would be detrimental to the public good, nor would it impair the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Residential retaining wall requirements are in place to prevent a residential site from being dominated by retaining walls, resulting in aesthetic concerns for the neighborhood. Due to the location on a wooded hilltop and the size of the parcel, staff believes that there would be no direct conflict with this intent. 
because all three of the criteria are met for the applicant's requests numbers one, two, and three, staff recommends approval for, of requests one, two, and three of this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay. So I agree with staff. We'll group these items, so one through three. So if the ap applicant would like to step forward, uh, state your name, and then just address one through three, and then we'll follow up with the rest of the items. Uh, hi, my name is Patrick Baker, uh, Idlewild Custom Construction, and I'm representing uh, the owner, and I'm also a partner with the owner in the project. Um, I will say I think five is probably related to one through three as well, but we can discuss those. Um, the driveway slope, I think, impacts the height of some of those walls as well, because if we bring the slope of that driveway down, it just moves the house further up the hill and then requires maybe some additional height to the retaining walls as well. So it, not to say that it's not related or that it is, it just they all kind of relate to one another. Um, Mitchell Barnett, who was here earlier, I should have had him speak on my behalf as well, uh, being uh, a representative of the HOA and their architectural review. He's actually seen the plans, as has the, uh, the ARC for the neighborhood, and have kind of given their, their blessing um, to the project but it does have to go back to them for final review once we know that we'll be able to, uh, to do the things that we're asking for the wall heights. So um, as uh, Eric stated, what we're trying to do with the walls and with the heights is essentially keep the house closer to the street so that we do reduce the number and height of the walls. Um, that six foot requirement uh, six foot max requirement means that we would ultimately have to tier walls the further back the hill we go. Um, and it also increases the number of retaining walls for the driveway um, in the front of the, of the property as well. So ultimately what we're trying to, to accomplish with the walls is reduce the number of walls, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. by increasing the height of the walls. Did I convolute things even more? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, all right. So I guess, you know, it does raise a question. I, they're independent, I think, in some way they are interrelated. Some of the questions I'll probably ask later. And if we could pull up um, maybe the exhibits on this one, Eric. Mm -hmm. Do you have one in mind that you pull that? Let's start just with the, uh, probably the site layout, C3.0. It's on my PDF page 62 if that helps you out. Did the applicant have additional comments on the retaining wall? I don't want to interrupt you in the middle. No, of no, you're, okay. you're good. So um, one of the um, ways that we ended up with the layout that we did is um, if you're looking at the file over on the, toward the right-hand side of the page, which would be the left-hand side of the house, you can see the drainage lines. Um, one of the natural drainage swales that comes down from the property and from the hillside We've positioned the house to the right um, of that swale, uh, to the left if you're looking at the page, but to the right if you're standing on the street looking up the hill. Um, and by doing that and locating the house where we have on the hillside, um, we actually are trying to preserve some of that natural drainage so that we don't have to um, essentially a common right now if, with this design we're able to divert the water around the house and around the retaining walls to that that drainage ditch um, and preserve that portion of the lot um, with the driveway slopes being what they are um, we're able to only have two retaining walls in the front or excuse me three retaining walls in the front and one in the back of the house that kind of encircles or, or encapsulates the entire house. Um, if we had to increase the slope, or excuse me, decrease the slope to the driveway, it would push the house further back up the hill. We would have higher walls in the front uh, to support the driveway and ultimately have taller tiered walls behind the house. Any other questions about that?
let's keep moving and we may come back to you if we okay. get okay, sure. questions. So next, we'll uh, open the public comment. Any citizen comments? Now everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, is there a motion to close the public comment? Motion to close. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 So public Thank comments you. closed. <laughs> Thanks. So we can take these, at least from a board perspective, staff's grouped them into the retaining wall issue, and then we have, so number, the first three are related to the retaining wall, walls, plural. Uh, fourth is the side facing garage, and then the fifth is the driveway slope. So staff, we can approve the first three with one motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve items one, request one, two, and three based on staff's recommendations, reasons of exceptional narrowness, shallowness, shape, a specific piece of property at the time, enacting the zoning ordinance for number one. Number two, strict application of any provision enacted under zoning ordinance would result in particular and exceptional practical difficulties to or exceptional or undue hardships upon the owner of the property. Such relief three, such relief can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or the ordinance. A motion made for approval. Is there a second? Second. Second and all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, seeing none, the first three requests have been approved. So let's next move to uh, request number four, and I'll go back to staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> staff reviewed this request for the three required criteria as established by state law, um, the first of which requires uniqueness in shape or topography of the lot in question um, or some other extraordinary or exceptional situation which prevents the zoning ordinance to be followed as written. Staff found that there are exceptional to topographical conditions on the site. However, staff believes that the topography of the site does not create a situ situation in which the zoning ordinance cannot be met. Um, the design and overall size of the home created the situation in which the garage needs to be in front of the front facade of the home. And because of this, staff finds that this criterion is not met for this request. The second criterion requires that exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. Staff believes that there's no hardship upon the owner. Um, despite there being other houses in the neighborhood with garages of similar design, if the house were to be designed uh, to be smaller within the buildable area, a garage that meets the zoning ordinance could be built. And therefore, staff believes that this criterion is also not met for this request. The final criteria requires that relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Staff does not believe that this request would be detrimental to the public good, nor would it impair the purpose of the zoning ordinance due to the proportionate size of the home, uh, the design of the home and its location atop a hilltop. There would be no direct conflict with the intent of the zoning ordinance and therefore staff believes that this criterion is met for this request. Because two of the three of the criterion are not met for the applicant's request, staff recommends disapproval of request four of this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, staff. Uh, move to the applicant next. Yeah, so um, this one caught me off guard. I wasn't prepared for it uh, when Eric and I were discussing the project um, because I, the property was purchased and we started planning for it in September. Um, I think the zoning ordinance changed in uh, December. Is that correct? Uh, January 2020, technically. Oh, was it January 2020? Yeah, okay, I'm a year behind. Or January. Uh, it was, yeah, I mean, January 1st, December 30th. Okay. Yeah, so ignorance of the law is no excuse, right? So, yeah, I, I, I was caught unaware. Um, and the word that gets me, I think, in the zoning ordinance is the word and. Um, because the garage is seven feet behind the most forward portion of the house, um, but it is in front of the front door, if that makes sense. Um, so 
I'm behind the front of the house, but I'm in front of the front door when it comes to the location of the garage. And one of the files um, has a good illustration. It's A101 um, that shows where the front of the garage is in relation to the, to the house and the front door. Could we pull that one up, Eric, yeah. if you don't mind? It's PDF page 63. They get in the packet. I, I'm pulling up these zoning ordinances that it might be able to look. I got you. So when you're looking at that page over on the left-hand side, you can see that there's um, uh, a study on the far left that makes that the most forward feature of the house. Then there's stairs up to a, uh, to a covered porch that sits behind the front facade of the, of the garage. So my request in this one would just be to, um, to approve that since it is behind the most forward feature of the of the house and that is not inconsistent with a lot of the other designs in Avalon when that neighborhood was was conceived um, in fact there's a, a number of homes just within the vicinity of this particular lot where the garage is the forward feature of the house not even like it's they're just in front of even the front door but the whole the whole front of the house so I'm kind of halfway there as it is right now And there, there are two garages on the home, correct? So there's the one just to the left of the front porch on the left side of the exhibit that I'm looking at in the back of the room, and then there's yes. another garage on the right-hand yeah, side. Yeah, there's two two-car garages that kind of make a, a motor court or a courtyard on the right side of the house um, where the driveway, when you approach the house on that curved driveway, puts you over to the right-hand side of the property um, or the right-hand right -hand side of the house um, and has that motor court toward the front. So staff, this request would impact both of those garages, correct? They would both have to be the same distance back from that front door of the home? That is correct. Both would be considered side yard facing garages. Gotcha. Okay. Any additional applicant comments? Um, I would say if, I, if, if it doesn't pass, I would go back to the architect and have her redesign the front door <laughs> um, as opposed to adjusting where the garages are because the location of those garages with the way the driveway is designed and the way the walls are designed, it, it probably changes a lot yeah. if we were to redesign the garages versus redesigning the front door. Um, however, I don't want to redesign the front door location and if you look at the front elevation um, of the house, it's A301. Um, we would have to pull that front door forward with the study, and I think that would impact the way that she has designed the, the large windows on the front of the house. If we were to pull that front door forward, the pitch of that roof changes, the arch of the window changes, um, which is why I'm essentially asking for the variance request as opposed to, to redesigning the front of the house. It, it would change it, I think, dramatically um, in relation to where the front door is located. Um, the good news is the way that she has designed the, the um, facade of the two garages, they are kind of, I guess the way she designed it is that it doesn't necessarily look like a garage. Um, and the fact that it is sitting, you know, 30 feet up the hill off of the street, I, I don't think you'll get much of, a, of an impact from even street level um, for any, you know, neighbors who are looking at the house and may complain about it, particularly since this motor court kind of feature is, is already present within a neighborhood. Okay. Any additional comments? Me. Yeah, no. I'm okay. So any next we'll move to the... Uh, public comment portion, any citizen comments? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to close the public comment? Motion to close. Motion made by Frank, is there a second? Seconded by Jeff. All in favor say aye. 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 
No one opposed, so public comments closed. Are there any factual questions at all from the board members? If not, I'll entertain a motion. get a motion on the floor too we can discuss kind of items because I have thoughts as well as probably others I'd like to ask staff a question if I may Mr. Chairman absolutely This three foot front facade setback um, what would your what would your recommendation be to correct that? Can you clarify the question? Yeah. In, in item number one, the fact that the three foot front facade is, is uh, what, three feet in front of the front door? Is that the issue with that? So side facing garages, I'm trying to find the exact spot here side facing garages are required to be three feet behind the front facade of the home and the front door of the home um, now the way it's designed currently you can see that it is designed in a way that the garages are more than three feet from the front facade of the home which you'll see here on the bottom left this is technically the front facade however the front door is further set back so it meets half of what's required um, so in order to rectify that either the garages would need to be moved back or the front door would need to be moved forward The three foot setback did not change, but the behind the front door language was added with that adoption of the new ordinance. Um, and you can see it, it will be impactful across the city, um, but a lot of newer constructed homes, um, we were seeing that they had deeply recessed entries where you could not even see the front door from the street and um, then you had the garage almost, you know, much farther front facing. Obviously the width of this um, proposed home is substantially different. I mean, it's a, a different scale than a lot of the things that we normally see. Right, right. So, right. So an application standpoint. I don't at all, I don't at all find it distasteful, do you? No, sir, I think it's beautiful. Up on the hill like that. I mean, you know, the zoning application has a obviously a and a, you know it's an application to where it. it uh, I mean, my house does not meet that criteria. So, uh, but given some of these these subdivisions with the houses closer together, I could see why the the ordinance is put into place. Right. This is a little different animal. Right. It, and I don't know how this relates to some of the prior discussions, but 
Um, the last one that was up here, I think, was her review was based on an ordinance from when the neighborhood was designed versus the current ordinance. Would that apply here as well? To to clarify, um, when that state law went into place in 2015, it did not retroactively do anything with subdivisions approved prior to 2015. So subdivisions that were established 2015 and onward after that law was in place are reviewed with the ordinance that was in place. Anything done prior to that is reviewed with our current ordinance because that law does not apply. Yeah, I was just trying to find a back door. Yeah, I did ask staff, so I don't know if this helps you, Jeff. I asked staff earlier today the question, because some PUD subdivisions were, were approved with very specific requirements within that, but it sounds like Avalon was not, there's not a specific requirement addressing the front door location and the setback. So that's why we're looking at the new zoning in this instance anyway. Is that correct? That's correct. Anything not included in that defaults to the zoning ordinance. It is a very much isolated subdivision. There's no through traffic. Is the board member ready to entertain a motion? No, go ahead. I can't even find it, Frank. You go ahead. for request number four based on the, the proximity of the, the lot and the, the fact that it, it's uh, I don't think the ordinance yeah just like is applicable. yeah take your time Jeff if you want to look through the three criteria too feel free to now you're good. Take your time. Don't rush. Jeff, I'll say when you're ready to make the motion, if you could pull your microphone down a little it's bit, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so staff recommendation is on page 10 there. I don't know if that helps you or not, but. Yeah. And it goes through those items too. to allow for a side facing garage to extend beyond the required three foot setback from the front facade. All right, motion made, is there a second? A second. Yeah. All in favor, I'll tell you what, let's, let's have some discussion. Let's clear fact. Yep, so I'll, I'll add to that, I think for me, I looked at this item, there's two garages we just approved. There were three requests for retaining walls. I think it is interrelated, the entire site. It's easy to say, move those garages back, but there's not much in the backyard to change there. I definitely don't wanna see the front door moved up. Um, I can't see a way to do it and make it look right. Yep, so given, I, th I think adding to that, to me, topography on the site, we're clearly meeting uh, criterion one, it's an exceptional situation. The shape of the lot um, topography is definitely unique on the site. Uh, Mr. Chair, to clarify the motion, uh, we would just request that you, you said it was seven feet behind the front facade? Right, it's, it's um, seven feet behind the front facade, but it is, let me look, I think that measurement is on there. Um, Is 
Looks like it's nine feet in front of the front door. So to either clarify your motion of approval to specify either seven feet behind the front facade of the home or nine feet in front of the front door of the home, um, just so that it is approved exactly how it's shown here in the application. Okay, so basically the motion would need to be nine, nine feet in front of the front door. Is that kind of what we're based on that nine feet on? Or I think it would be appropriate for seven feet behind the front facade of the home. Yeah, because yeah, it's, I think I'm you can make there. it. You can make it both um, to be specific to this design. But it sounds like since it is seven feet behind the front facade, that's already meeting the zoning requirement, and really it's just the portion uh, that's nine feet behind the front door that's not. So you can do it either way. Is the applicant <laughs> confident in the dimensions? <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. It's, it's only the front facade that's causing the issue. It's the, the front door. The not, so because the door would be okay if the front facade were not there. The, the front door is located nine feet behind the, the front of the garage. The front of the garage, yeah. So that's, that's the issue. Would you like to amend your motion, Jeff? I'll say um, I make a motion to approve the variance request number four, allowing the front door to be nine feet behind the facade of the garage. Okay, motion made. Is there a second? second? All right, seconded by Frank. All in favor say aye. 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 So seeing none opposed. Um, any more discussion at all? We kind of stopped on the conversation. All made a comment. Anybody else have comments? Okay. Right. Thank you, guys. So item is approved. I'm, I'm working on double-sided copies here, so I'm like, what's the front, what's the back? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, this is the longest packet I've seen probably since a planning commission meeting. <laughs> All right, so now we're to our request number five which is, uh, I'll see here. I'm gonna go backwards on my packet just to make sure. So it's gonna be driveway slope. a request uh, for the maximum allowable driveway slope. So staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, staff has reviewed this request for the three required criteria as established by state law. The first of which requires uniqueness in shape or topography of the lot in question or some other extraordinary or exceptional situation which prevents the zoning ordinance from be following, being followed as written. Staff found that there are exceptional topographical conditions on the site which require an increased driveway grade to access the developable area. As the applicant indicated in their letter, the increased driveway grade allows them to place the home in a location that ultimately requires fewer retaining walls and less overall disturbance of the hilltop. Because of this, staff finds that the criterion is met for this request. The second criterion requires that exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship occur if the zoning ordinance were to be followed. Staff believes that exceptional practical difficulties exist in relation to this request. If the home were located further back on the site in a place where the 14% maximum grade can be met, the applicant would be requesting a variance for seven retaining walls instead of four, and therefore resulting in practical difficulties designing the site in a manner that drains properly. Staff finds that this criterion is also met for this request. The final criterion requires that relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good or without impairing the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Staff does not believe that this request would be detrimental to the public good, nor would it impair the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Therefore, or due to limitations of the site caused by topography, staff believes that there's no direct conflict with the intent of the zoning ordinance, and therefore staff believes that this criterion is met for this request. Um, because all three criteria are met for the applicant's request, staff recommends approval of request five of this item with a condition that the driveway shall be designed to ensure emergency access can be provided subject to Franklin Fire Department approval. And I am happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Eric. 
the applicant? Um, yeah, so we've covered this a little bit already, the idea with this driveway and, and increasing that slope from 14 to, I think it's a max of um, 16 and a half, um, does allow that specific location of the house on the lot and again reduces the, the number of overall retaining walls uh, that are required and, and disturbs the hillside less. Um, like I said, that one is, is kind of related to the retaining walls that we've already discussed, but if you have any additional questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Are there any citizen comments at all? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to close the public comment? Move to close. Motion made, is there a second? Second. Seconded, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Or hearing none, the public comment's closed. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, sir. Motion to approve request number five, maximum allowable driveway slope based on staff analysis, reasonable narrowness, shall in this shape of specific piece of property at the time of enacted zoning ordinance and topographical conditions. Two, strict application and the provisions enacted under the zoning ordinance would result in particular and exceptional practical difficulties or exceptional undue hardships upon the owner of the property. Three, such relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without substantially impairing the purpose and the intent of the zoning ordinance. I'll mention too, Frank, there's a condition that staff recommended on there and it relates to fire approval. Um, if you wanna add that to your motion. Please, okay. thank you. If you can just read that out of the staff report and add that to your motion for us just with a condition that of, of the 15 16.5% slope yeah so there's a sentence on there uh, so staff had just mentioned that it hasn't gone through full fire department approval yet oh okay so, so they've looked at the concept I, and haven't approved it request for a line driveway up to 16.5 slope based on criteria that authorize a variance to be established with a condition that the driveway shall be designed to ensure emergency access can be provided subject to Franklin Fire Department approval. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Frank, motion made. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jeff. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Nope. So item request number five for item five is approved. Thank you. Good luck with farmer. What's that? Good luck with farmer. Yeah, thank you. Well, he, he brings that big truck up there. You're going to be scratching your head. That's what they have the long hoses for. Uh huh. <laughs> I think I, I would, uh, you know, I don't know from a staff review and approval perspective. I, I would like to see, I did ask staff earlier today, you know, has the fire department looked at it? Uh, it looked like concept wise, but I mean, to me, it could be a major problem if they say no, it may not be a problem, but um, you know, if we could integrate them into that process early and make sure they give feedback, at least to planning to help them out. I think that's gonna be important. Being fortunate enough, if we get this far, approve a variance and then the applicants back dealing with a fire issue. Yeah, and I, I did just clarify, I asked Eric if that fire department review is part of the permitting process. Um, and he said yes. So I imagine they'll get to that um, here in the next month or so when I get all of the uh, the formal application for the building permit and review turned in. So I will say also, Eric's worth every penny. He was awesome to work with. I haven't done any of these variances requests before and, and he was really helpful <laughs> in this process. So He's thanks, earned guys. his money tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Unfortunately, you. I've been on for 26 years. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Jeff. Is there a second? I second, sir. Second by Frank. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Cool. Now, come out.